Welcome. My name is Dr. Romeo. I'm a neurosurgeon with Neurosurgery One at Littleton Hospital. I'm a functional neurosurgeon, meaning that I specialize uh, in different forms of neuromodulation. And um, this is one form of neuromodulation that uh, we have uh, begun doing here at Littleton Hospital um, recently and that I really want to talk to you about. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, and this is uh, neuromodulation specifically for obstructive sleep apnea. What is obstructive sleep apnea? So many of you are probably already familiar, uh, as the name implies, this is obstruction of the airway during sleep. And this occurs often at the level of the pharynx, so either the part of the nasopharynx or the oral pharynx collapses the airway during sleep and causes these apnea events, which can uh, be pretty long. As you can see in this kind of chart down below, which is what you get from a standard sleep study, you know, these apnea events can last quite a while, 47 seconds, 86 seconds. I don't even know if I could hold my breath that long. So you can get pretty significant drops in blood oxygen levels as demonstrated by the uh, pulse oximetry, oximetry uh, numbers down below. Um, and this, you know, affects a lot of people. 20 million pe people is, uh, as a neurosurgeon, there's not a whole lot of other diseases that we treat that affect that many people. So we're really excited that we can reach this many people. These decreases in oxygen levels and apnea events certainly can have long-term health sequelae. And uh, some of these patients feel bad. They feel tired, increased daytime sleepiness, increased risk of having accidents during the day. It affects your bed partners. And then cardiovascular health, so increased uh, risk of hypertension, um, strokes, heart attacks, all those things. So how is this treated? I mean, um, many people are familiar with CPAP. Uh, it's sort of the mainstay treatment, and it's very effective. It can certainly treat the symptoms, make people feel better, uh, improve their health. Um, however, it can be uncomfortable, and that's the biggest drawback. And a lot of people just don't tolerate it. It's, you know, wearing a mask that is forcing air uh, essentially down your throat um, at night is not for everybody. And so what are the alternatives? Well, right now there aren't great alt alternatives before this treatment. There are some other things, I mean, oral appliances um, and much more invasive surgeries, which really haven't demonstrated to be as effective as even CPAP is and um, have more side effects associated with them. So um, upper airway stimulation therapy. So that how, how does it work? So this is a very exciting uh, therapy. Essentially, it is stimulating the hypoglossal nerve, which is the nerve that controls the muscles of the tongue. And it is stimulating uh, branches of the nerve that result in protrusion of the tongue. The tongue actually protrudes out um, slightly. And, um, and in doing so, it pulls the airway open. And, uh, and allow and you know fixes the apnea events. And so patients, when they have the implant, they're given this remote. Essentially, they at nighttime turn it on, and after a 30 minute period or so, when the patient falls asleep, the therapy begins and it times stimulation to inspiration. And so that every time the, um, you take a breath, it delivers stimulation, which opens up the airway. This is a video we can go over that was on news. In our morning rounds, a treatment offering hope for millions of sleep apnea patients. The disorder causes people to stop breathing when they're asleep. An estimated 22 million Americans suffer from sleep apnea. It puts them at greater risk for diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and memory loss. Patients who are older, overweight, and male are generally most at risk. David Begno shows us the new option helping some patients. David, good morning. Nora, good morning. For those who struggle with sleep apnea, treatments like the CPAP machine can be hard to sleep with. They don't always work. And a lot of people just can't get a full night's sleep with it. But now there's a new FDA-approved device called Inspire, and it's gaining popularity. For some people, it's a last resort. Their life literally depends on it. The Cleveland Clinic named this kind of treatment number two on its list of top medical innovations for 2018. We met a woman who finally found relief after more than two decades of trying to get a good night's rest. I wasn't breathing. I wasn't getting the correct amount of oxygen. My thought process had gone. Good job! Peggy Sarabo's memory got so bad, her family thought she had dementia. The 59-year-old was so exhausted, she says she could barely do her job as a nurse. So people were noticing it, but you were too. I was too. You knew something wasn't right. I knew not as quickly as they did, but I knew I was in trouble. 
Peggy has severe obstructive sleep apnea, where her throat muscles relax, blocking her airway and disrupting her sleep. On average, she stops breathing 53 times an hour. That's nearly once every minute during a night's sleep. Give me an example of a night. Up four hours, maybe sleep two. This is the area where I would sleep. The oxygen, oxygen machine, correct. CPAP. Correct. She tried other Close treatments. It. Take the mask, bring it over my yeah. face like this. She did not find relief from the CPAP machine, a common treatment that delivers constant pressurized air. The CPAP wasn't getting the job done, so you needed exactly. oxygen on top of that. Exactly. And then that didn't work. That's when they introduced me to Inspire and saved my life. Inspire is a pacemaker-like device implanted in the chest. It senses when your breathing slows down and sends an electric pulse to the tongue to stimulate it forward, keeping the airway open. This has been revolutionary. It's been a game changer. Dr. Malritz Boone is Peggy's doctor at Thomas Jefferson Memorial Hospital in Philadelphia. She'd given up. She had memory issues. She was miserable. This is not a benign disease. As I said, this is a killer, and it actually shortens people's lives. I didn't realize I had it so bad. A few months after having the Inspire device implanted. You just need to relax and breathe normally. Peggy went to a sleep lab to see how it was working. All right, so listen for me on the intercom, okay? Okay, great. Good night. They ran tests throughout the night, and early the next morning, Dr. Boone revealed the results. So before we activated the device, we have all sorts of problems. This is basically your brain saying, I'm not breathing, I need to do something about it. And after we activate the device, it's perfect. Look at your oxygen. Nice, stable, flat line, staying around 96, 97%. So this is as good as it gets, Okay. and as far as I'm concerned, this is a cure. This is awesome. A study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that more than two-thirds of patients experienced less sleep apnea after getting the implant. It was like sleeping with a herd of elephants. For years, all Peggy and her husband David wanted <laughs> was a good night's rest, and now they're finally getting it. I'm going to show you. Every night, Peggy turns on the implant right before going to sleep. So, What's it like to sleep now? Great. Turn myself on. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> and I sleep. And then I get up and I turn myself off. <laughs> and I have a normal day like you and everybody else. Come, Come here, here Max. Boy. Come here, Doodles. It doesn't work for everybody. Boy. But man, it worked for you. Oh, it sure did. It saved my life. Love the ball. Let it go. Now, Inspire is not for everyone. It's only for moderate to severe cases like Peggy. And like any surgery, there is a risk of infection. For Peggy, she says her memory is back to 100% and she's sleeping great at night. Now, the device costs around $20,000, not including the surgery. It's not cheap. And yeah. is insurance covering? So insurance, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Her doctor had to kind of nudge the insurance company along, but they do. Well, she must really love her husband after saying on national TV, it sounds like a herd of elephants. They're <laughs> sleeping Just together. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that is really great news. Yeah. So does she Good have to wear the mask too. when she's got the implant? No, not no. anymore. Not anymore. Wow. And when she turns it on, if she talks, it sounds like she's having a stroke. But other than that, she feels nothing. She can just feel it pulsating her tongue forward. It's like a life-saving device. Oh, it is. Yeah, Absolutely. That's great. All right, I think that gives a great overview of the therapy and a good interview with a patient who um, was really benefited from the therapy. So how does this work? What does is, uh, what is the surgery actually involve? So it's three small incisions. It's, a, it's an incision just underneath the chin where we actually find the hypoglossal nerve and wrap the stimulator around the nerve. And then it's an incision just below the clavicle, the collarbone, where the actual battery sits. And then it's this, another incision in the uh, mid-axillary line, sort of just underneath your armpit area, where we placed a pressure probe in, the, uh, in between the ribs uh, at one level, and that is actually what detects inspiration and measures inspiration and allows the device to then time stimulation to the inspiration. And the battery lost, lasts a long time, you know, 11 years. It only operates at night. It is an MRI compatible or conditional device, so it does allow certain MRIs, not all MRIs, but certain MRIs. And the surgery itself is, a, is generally an outpatient procedure, so patients oftentimes, get, um, most of the time, go home the same day. Uh, the pain associated with the procedure is minimal, usually well controlled with 
over-the-counter medications. And we try to limit for the first several weeks strenuous activity just until it heals in, but then back to normal activity, there's really no restrictions. After you have it implanted, you will see either your pulmonologist or myself and follow up, and that's when we turn it on and we find settings that are most comfortable for you. And then generally, uh, you go home, and over the course of several weeks, you slowly ramp up the stimulation amplitude so that it's well tolerated by you. And, uh, and then we track you. We make sure that, you know, over the next several months that it's actually working for you, that you feel better, you feel more rested. And then also we get another sleep study usually uh, at about three months afterward and um, can actually demonstrate uh, objectively that uh, you're, uh, you know, you have improvement. And so this has been a well-studied treatment, uh, FDA approved now. It was a uh, prospective uh, trial on the therapy looking at patients before and after and, and the improvement in their numbers. The numbers that you usually get for a sleep study, some of you may be aware, there's uh, the apnea hypopnea index, the AHI number, which is the primary number that you look for in a sleep study. And you can see that there's substantial uh, improvement, 79% reduction. So the average at pre-treatment was 29 and then it, um, and just so you get kind of a reference, f greater than 15 is moderate to severe, is defined as moderate to severe sleep apnea. So, so these were at near almost 30 before treatment and down below six after treatment. So it's a very effective treatment. And then even other things, snoring. So you know, a lot of people ask this, is not guaranteed to improve your snoring, but it certainly does in the large majority of patients, nearly 90%, that significant reduction in their snoring. It really not only can help you, but also your bed partner as well. Besides the objective things, um, patients feel better. Patients liked it. Patients gave very positive responses in follow-up, uh, and th these are five-year follow-ups, so pretty durable treatment. This is just showing you know, what we've already talked about, this is well-studied, FDA-approved treatment now. So how do you know if you're a candidate? What are the requirements to have this treatment? So not tolerate CPAP, which can be that you just don't like wearing it. Uh, it doesn't have to be that you, you, you know, are forced to use it for a certain period of time. It could be you just can't wear it because it's uncomfortable. Um, usually your body mass index of less than 32 is a, re is a requirement. So Sometimes there's some flexibility um, with that as well. And then you have to have moderate to severe sleep apnea on a sleep study usually done within two years. And so that's that AHI of greater than or equal to 15 that we're looking for. And, uh, and then you have to actually undergo a endoscopic exam under anesthesia where we actually make sure that your airway collapse is something that will respond to the treatment. So we can actually look in the back of your uh, pharynx and, and verify that we think with a high degree of confidence that you will respond to this treatment. And so just to reiterate, this is a low risk procedure. Oftentimes go home the same day. Risk of this procedure are pretty low. Infection being the thing that we worry about the most, but uh, it's pretty rare. It's very well tolerated, patients like it, and it improves their symptoms, it's effective. And a patient ambassador, I left that in because uh, this is a nice feature that the company offers where you can actually uh, get in contact with a patient that has it, talk to them about it, see if, if it seems like it's something for you. This is where you can find some more information. Uh, this is uh, my information, and then also the company website. Uh, has uh, they've really done a great job of, of providing uh, lots of information and resources for patients. So some questions. Can I go through airport security? Yes, you can go through airport security. Oftentimes what you will have is a, a card that, uh, that says that you have an implanted device and, and, and that just means that usually you don't go through the metal detectors, that they just do a simple pat down. But yes, you can go through airport security. Uh, what are the side effects? So, very limited side effects for this treatment. Sometimes you can have tongue weakness. Um, that's not very common, and usually it's transient if it does happen, meaning it gets better. Sometimes there is some discomfort related to just having your tongue uh, your muscle 
stimulated in that way. And again, that's usually, we do, we're very careful to start the amplitude uh, of the stimulation at a very low level and then slowly ramp up so that we make it as uh, tolerable as possible and, and, and make sure you, we give you time to adjust to it. So it, it can take a little bit of adjustment, but for the most part, it's pretty well tolerated. Will I feel the piece wrapped around the nerve? Um, so if you go feel, looking for it, you, you may be able to palpate it, but it's not, it won't be noticeable otherwise. Will I feel the battery pack? Uh, again, you know, it's usually pretty well um, hidden underneath the skin, but if you, you know, went looking for it, you could certainly find it. And you kind of want to be able to find it because that's how you turn it on. You have to hold the remote right up to it. So does insurance cover it? Yes, um, most major insurers uh, now cover this, this treatment. Will I feel the shock while I'm sleeping? Uh, so you won't necessarily feel a shock, but you could feel your tongue protruding, um, the tongue movement. Uh, and again, we try to set it such that uh, the amplitude of stimulation is low initially, and we slowly ramp up so that you get uh, well adjusted to it. And uh, that usually works for the ma majority of patients. Can the stimulator be removed? Yes. Uh, if, certainly if, it, if there's an infection or a complication, it can be removed. Will this stop my snoring? Uh, so again, it's hard to guarantee that because there have been people who it does not stop their snoring, but 90% of patients have either no snoring or soft snoring after this therapy. So yes, uh, it, it, for a large majority, it does improve their snoring. Again, if you have any other questions or need any more information, please reach out to us or, you know, always use, there's the company website as well. Thank you.